Hello, this is Erin Garcia, Director of Exhibitions at the California Historical Society. Today, I'm going to show you a selection of Arnold Genthe's photographs of children in San Francisco's Chinatown. The California Historical Society holds a number of Genthe's vintage prints, negatives, and lantern slides, including portraits of notable San Franciscans and views of the city in the aftermath of the 1906 earthquake and fires. Genthe is perhaps best known for the extensive record he made of Chinatown in the 1890s, before the district was leveled. He began photographing Chinatown shortly after arriving in San Francisco in 1895. Having earned his doctorate in his native Germany, he came to the city to tutor the children of an affluent German-American family. He soon became intrigued by San Francisco's immigrant communities and began using his newly acquired photography skills to record what he saw. By the end of 1897, he was no longer teaching and had instead devoted himself to photography. The former tutor was especially interested in Chinatown's children. From the studio he set up on Sutter Street, Chinatown was just a few blocks away, and he ventured into the district regularly with his camera. Gentha sought a sense of realism and spontaneity, qualities that appealed to his artistic values, and stood in direct opposition to the conventionality and self-consciousness of commercial studio portraiture. Victorian San Francisco was full of establishments like William Shue's Pioneer Gallery, which photographed sitters with props in front of painted backdrops. Often, the same set of props appeared in different portraits, and in the case of Chinese sitters, those items were designed to look ethnically appropriate. Genther rejected not only the artificiality of the studio, but also the vulgar display of materialism and its association with commerce. Though he did make his living taking pictures, Genther considers himself an amateur an artist striving for a deeper level of expression rather than a professional photographer. This conceit was one he shared with other pictorialist photographers of his day. For Gentha, making art was a matter of authenticity, which he believed he could achieve by taking candid portraits of people on the street. Using a handheld camera, sometimes concealed in his coat, he waited to capture his subjects, his unsuspecting victims as he called them, unaware. In a 1900 Camera Craft magazine article, he wrote, I think it is only the photographer who understands the art of making himself invisible, who will obtain pictures in Chinatown that will have artistic value. Tall and fashionably dressed, Gentha was clearly visible on the streets of Chinatown, but he would have been just one among many non-Chinese photographers and tourists in the district. By the 1890s, the inhabitants of Chinatown were accustomed to Westerners trying to take their picture. After the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act, which banned new immigration and prevented Chinese people from becoming citizens, Chinatown was increasingly segregated from the rest of the city. The Chinese were no longer perceived as a threat to the white working class, and a new view emerged among whites that envisioned the district in aesthetic, romanticized terms. Chinatown became a frequent subject for artists, but, however well-intended, Chinatown's inhabitants were not always amenable to their incursions. In Gentha's 1908 book, Old Chinatown, author Will Irwin noted, You might pick a specially beautiful or interesting Chinaman and stare at him all day. He would notice you no more than a post, unless you pulled a camera on him. Irwin goes on to suggest that children created an exception. A Chinese father would indeed soften if you stopped to pay court to the baby in his arms. That, it seemed to me, was the only point at which the Chinese willingly granted intercourse to the despised race, he wrote. Children signaled the rise of Chinese merchants, who, unlike the much derided Chinese laborer, could afford to have families. Gentha was interested in children who he perceived to be of high social status, as is evident in his preference for photographing girls and boys in traditional dress, particularly on holidays or special occasions when they wore their best clothes. He titled this image, Young Aristocrats. Gentha's photographs were, of course, extensively edited, and he intentionally excluded evidence of Western culture from his pictures. Take this image by Laura Adams Armour, a contemporary of Gentha's who also photographed in Chinatown. Notice the two young boys wearing Western-style blazers, ties, and hats. Looking again at Gentha's young aristocrats, we see two different croppings of his negative, a vintage print on the left and a later print from his negative on the right. In the wider view, a boy and a group of men appear in more modest clothing. Their dark hats, jackets, and pants suggest lower-class status, and could almost be mistaken for ordinary American garments. Gentha also used darkroom techniques such as burning, dodging, and even scratching out figures or details to focus attention on his desired subjects. 
Here, Gentha allowed light to illuminate the face and body of a toddler while casting the adult into deep shadow. The effect is similar in The Balloon Man, where opulently dressed children and three shiny balloons glow amid an indistinct mass of dark figures. The Caucasian balloon vendor is so darkly printed in his Western-style coat and hat that he almost completely recedes into the background. Gentha was interested in presenting an authentic portrait of Chinatown so long as it conformed to his notion of its culture as traditional and exotic, a place set apart from the rest of the city and isolated in its own history. In aestheticizing Chinatown and its inhabitants, Gentha's photographs underscored the existing social hierarchy. In a photograph titled Friends, Gentha shows to his presumably white viewers a girl named Minnie Tong, who appears in a halo of light wearing splendid clothing, as though to represent Chinatown herself. In the self-portrait, Gentha appears as a fatherly figure, the presenter of Chinatown, which was effectively his role as the district's preeminent photographer. The portrait symbolically describes the paternalistic relationship between San Francisco's elites and those they deemed respectable Chinese. By the time this and other photographs we have looked at appeared in Gentha's second book in 1913, the district had been decimated by the 1906 earthquake and fires and was being rebuilt as a tourist destination that catered to Western tastes. Gentha lost much of his work in the devastation, but his Chinatown negatives had been safely stored in a friend's vault. Even as Chinatown and its inhabitants became more a part of the city, Gentha continued to print and publish photographs that looked back nostalgically at the old quarter and asserted an already antiquated view of the Chinese place in San Francisco society. Thank you.